spring is in the air. And you know what that means? Hopefully, we had an amazing spring and summer last year. The weather, for us being in the middle of the pandemic, we had a great season for boating season. Yes. Did you know there are more than 11,000 lakes? in the state of Michigan. I knew there were a lot of lakes. 11,000 is a very surprising number. That's a lot of bodies of water, but you know, we are the Great Lakes state, Ronnie. We are, and especially around here, um, pretty much everyone I know last summer was out on their boat. Mm -hmm. For me, I was out on my raft because we do have the sandbar here uh, at Cass Lake. So, um, you know, it's way steep. You don't need a boat if you can get a raft. No, if you can get a raft, get out to the sandbar, you're having a good time, Ronnie. Plus, I don't need a license to operate my uh, raft. That too. Well, with us to talk a little bit more, let's bring in Corporal Ivan Perez. He's the State Marine Specialist for the Michigan Department of Natural Resources for the Law Division. So great to have you with us. Thanks, I really appreciate being here with y'all. Uh, so uh, give us an update, uh, last year, Extremely busy on our waterways here in Michigan? Um, absolutely. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the boating industry measured quite an uptick in the amount of vessels purchased. Um, a lot of new boat owners out there um, wanting to get out and uh, utilize the vessels. Um, being obviously in a uh, sort of a, uh, the, the, the um, what the COVID atmosphere has done and, and make made us, uh, you know, try to perform our social distancing. You know, people decided to get outdoors and social distance that way. And uh, at the beginning, uh, boating was kind of on the chopping block, but then it came back, which was good and, and great. And people were able to get outdoors and, and enjoy it. And I think it's actually quite healthy for you to, <laughs> to be able to get out of the house after being uh, confined for so long. So I spent a lot of uh, time out on the lake last year here, Cass Lake and Sylvan Lake. But when we talk about some of those new boat owners, right? do they have to have a license before they hit the waterway? Because it seemed like there were a lot of people out there last year who did not know what they were doing. Right. Well, you know, we, uh, um, we do have boating classes available for everybody. Um, it's not a requirement unless you reach a specific age. Um, for uh, vessels, you know, not personal watercraft, but for vessels, those that are less than 12 years of age can operate a motorboat um, if it's less than six horsepower without any restrictions, but that those are few and far between. Uh, they can operate a boat powered by a motor of, uh, more than six horsepower, but no more than 35 horsepower um, if they've been issued a boating safety certificate and have it on board and are directly supervised on board by someone at least 16 years of age or older. Um, and then, uh, and they may not operate a boat powered uh, by a motor of more than 35 horsepower legally under any conditions. Um, the, uh, those born on or after July 1st of 1996 may operate a boat legally only if they've been issued a boating safety certificate and have it on board. And those born before July 1st, 1996 may operate without restrictions. So it's kind of like moving towards a, kind of like a driver's license where, it's, you know, over time, you know, um, basically everyone will need a certificate of some form. And, and I want to add that our boating uh, classes have resumed, so so is our honey, uh, hunting uh, 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 hunting classes too. Our honey, hunter safety classes too have resumed with with you know certain restrictions, obviously, and you can find those online at our website. And can you take those classes online? Um, the boating safety class you can. Um, the hunter safety class, I think, our boat safety class. Um, you can, I know our hunter safety class, you can do a portion of it, but then you have to do what they call a field day where you go to a spot and they kind of run run you through uh, certain uh, scenarios, make sure you know how to handle a gun properly and then take the test on site. But for boater safety, you can uh, take the class completely um, online uh, through a portal on our website, but I strongly suggest taking an in-person class because you really just tend to learn more when, when you're hands-on. Colonel, or uh, 
Corporal Halby a colonel. Corporal. <laughs> I'm sorry, Corporal. <laughs> I, I've impressed you. I, I just gave you a promotion. Thank you. I, <laughs> <my boss>. yeah. <laughs> With the Michigan uh, Department of Natural Resources. Uh, so if I can ask you, uh, does this include um, jet skis? And Yeah, so personal watercraft are a little bit different. Um, with the personal watercraft, you, uh, wait, where did I have it? I just had this up here, obviously, and let me find it. The age difference is a little bit different. Because um, it really that, seems to be the jet skiers are one of the um, biggest problems uh, on well, our waterways. And, and you say problem, but the, it, it, I don't know if it's a problem. They're just way more maneuverable yeah. and can pick up speed a whole lot faster than, than uh, you know, uh, another vessel. So they can start, they can stop, they can go in a tight circle, they can go from a slow to a fast really quick because of that and because of the nature of the personal watercraft of course you know the the uh, 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 availability to have an accident or some serious uh, uh, cause of accident uh, is evident due to their nature and, and experience you know um, but those less than 14 years of age may not legally operate a personal watercraft in the state those 14 and 15 of eight years of age may operate only if they've obtained a boating certificate safety certificate and they're either accompanied on board by their parent or someone who's at least 21 years of age or they're riding the personal watercraft at a distance of not more than 100 feet from their parent or a guardian who's 21 years of age those at least 16 years of age born or and born after december 31st 1978 they operate a personal watercraft legally only if they've obtained a boating safety certificate and so, so you know, you, you got to pay attention to, um, you know, and 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 being on the water is fun. I, I mean, absolutely, it's fun, and um, you gain a lot of knowledge, you know, through a boating safety program that that teaches you, you know, the dynamics of a boat. You know, you, personal watercraft is is uh, a, a a big example here where or even boats in general, you know, it's not like a car. It kind of drives like a car, but it's not like a car because you can't just stop on a dime. You have to think about your distance and the speed. Um, a lot of personal watercrafts don't have an immediate reverse that you can switch into. And, and when you let off the throttle on a personal watercraft, you lose your ability to control the personal watercraft. So even though you've got your you know, uh, steering mechanism tilted to the right, you're still going in a straight line. And that's where a lot of people who have experience have, you know, bumps with other vessels or crash into a dock unexpectedly. So that's where the experience comes in and, and knowing what you're doing when you're out there. Yeah, and how important too is it for people to really know the water and the area that they are going to be out on their um, vessels? Oh, it's huge. Um, prior to this, I was in the Coast Guard for four years out of Bay City, Michigan, doing search and rescue. And a lot of times, um, and, and even my 25 years as a conservation officer, mm -hmm. um, a lot of it has to do with um, some boating accidents are, are just um, not knowing the area they're operating in. Whether it be they run aground on a hidden sandbar, um, they don't realize in the middle of the night as they're returning to port, there's a break wall between them and the channel and they, they, they run a, a foul there. Um, and so it is important or, or even something as simple as, as they experience a vessel problem or they run out of gas or they're getting close to running out of gas and they don't know which local marina even has fuel at it, fuel at, at, at you know, where they can purchase some fuel or, or get some help. You know, with this day and age, with with cell phones, that's that's great. But you can't always rely on cell phones for, you know, reaching out for help in some instances, especially when when you bring electronics to a wet environment that that can cause issues. So you always have to have uh, uh, a secondary plan. Uh, don't go out there with just uh, one method of help, which is why on certain you know navigable waters you know you're required to have flares and and um uh, things of that nature 
and it's very specific to the body of water you're at. Even even things like uh, local watercraft control that tell you, hey, we have slow to wake in this area. You need to be aware of what these buoys mean, what the signs mean, so, so that you're not breaking any laws and causing damage in the area you're at. Corporal Ivan Perez with us here on the Mega Cast. He's a state marine specialist for the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. Do you anticipate more calls for assistance and help on our waterways because more and more people, uh, as you mentioned, bought new watercrafts, new boats this past season? You know, that that's, again, that, that all comes with the individual person and their personal experience with the vessel and what they encounter. One thing I can say, um, I was recently at a presentation from the National Weather Service, and we have all suffered, you know, the uh, unusual high water that that the, the state's been experiencing, and and you can see, you know, massive erosion problems and things of that nature. I mean, docks are submerged because of the uh, the amount of water. They said that, although the, and they usually do like six months. Uh, projections and right now they're projecting water levels to go down on the Great Lakes maybe about a foot but they wanted to emphasize we're still in the middle of a five-year high and so although you know it's some good news in the middle of regular bad news you know but but you know there's so many different things now that you have to be account accountable for you know your weight going over break walls submerged docks um, um, sometimes these docks have electrical uh, power to them and they electrify the water around them and that's, that's kind of a, a hidden uh, death sentence for people. You know, if they enter the water and there's an electrical charge, that's why they don't let you swim at marinas. So uh, with that, I think I saw a recent article talking about um, the uh, cutoff switch requirement. Uh, I believe this is a federal law. Can you break that down for us? What exactly does that mean? So in in 2018, um, the uh, Section 503 of the Coast Guard Authorization Act required manufacturers of vessels uh, less than 26 feet in length, and basically, you know, anything that could produce up to basically three horsepower or more, to require an uh, uh, emergency cutoff switch. And what the cutoff switch does is it's attached to you in a link. Everyone's see it, seen it. In this state, it's required on personal watercraft that, you know, you have this little uh, link. It looks like a little uh, bungee cord or just a little cord. And it, it's attached to a switch so that if uh, if you leave the helm for any reason, either stepping away or get thrown off, that it'll kill the engine immediately. Uh, the biggest reason for this is because um, there's a uh, phenomenon we call it the circle of death. Sounds kind of grim, but it is. Um, what happens is, is uh, uh, the, because of the characteristics of propelled propeller uh, uh, craft, propelled craft that use a propeller, um, they tend to have kind of a, a clockwise, you know, turn. And so when you let go of the wheel, it immediately wants to turn right as quick as possible. So it causes your engine to swing left, hit the back. It makes a sharp right turn ejecting everybody out of the boat well if it's in high gear that boat will just circle around come in a big circle and unfortunately times either severely injure or kill people um, because they get run over by the boat i think um, they said that a propeller you know um, turning at 3200 rpm can have up to 160 impacts on a person in one second wow and so um, that's why there are there are states we haven't basically gotten there yet. Um, I could foresee it happening, like Texas has, where all vessels, you know, under a certain length are required to have this emergency cutoff switch. So, with that being said, emergency cutoff switches are required. I think in the middle of uh, the 20 build year, they 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 are requiring now the new. Uh, National Defense Authorization Act of 2021 requires that vessels less than 26 feet in length with that same horsepower um, or more have to use this uh, link. So people are wondering, well, how do I know if my boat fits? How do I know if I'm required? Well, 
I sent the link uh, to your producer, I believe. It's a great fact sheet. I don't know if you can make that available to your listeners, but it can. Be and 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 it's a great fact sheet that goes through all these things. It explains what a hen number is, which is your identifier. Uh, it's a big long number that that's required on every boat, and it'll tell you how to figure out what year your vessel was built. And basically, most vessels built in twenty and now and newer will have be required to have an emergency cutoff switch and you will be required to be wearing that when you're um, going faster than slow no wave. Um, now when we say covered vessels, these are vessels basically that that aren't um, uh, that are under 26 feet. Um, if you have a cabin and your helm is within the cabin, that's an exception and there's smaller exceptions. But for the most part, you know, if, if you've got one on your vessel, you'll have to use it. And that's even for vessels that, that are made prior to that. If your vessel was made prior to this, uh, this effective date um, and it's not on there anymore, um, you're not required to have it on there. Uh, or if it, came, it didn't come with one, you're not required to put one on. Um, but if it does have one and it's in working order, uh, you'll be required to use it when you're on plane. And th this is only in federal waters. This is not statewide. This is not inland. So basically, anywhere the Coast Guard has jurisdiction, um, you, you, you'll you need to be, uh, uh, you, you know, paying attention to this law because they'll be the ones enforcing the statute first. And I, when I say enforce, it's probably, as, is, as with any new law, it'll be kind of a, um, uh, we're going to teach you, you know, kind of educate the public kind of kind of thing so right educate first and then uh, later you know uh, find them uh, down the road it's it sounds like a very important uh, safety uh, feature it is absolutely it is and and uh, and so you know um, we're, we're always finding that delicate balance between too much restriction and not enough and and you know um, this is one that makes sense um, based on, on, you know, just the history of severe accidents that we've seen directly related to this. Um, and this is nationwide, not just in Michigan, but nationwide. And so it is important. Uh, I think it's an important step. Well, Corporal, we so appreciate uh, your time this morning um, coming on, talking about this, because we know boating season is going to be very busy again this year here in the state of Michigan. Absolutely. I wish everybody... Uh, a safe boating season. Don't forget those life jackets. Uh, they are required on your vessels. Um, we have a link also I sent you to our Michigan uh, uh, Boat Responsible Handbook that we have that lists everything you need to know about getting underway and the laws that are specific to Michigan. I would advise everybody to do that or and take a boating safety class. Even if you think you know it all, you'll, you'll be surprised what you learn. Well, we'll see you on the waterways. If you're out on Cass Lake, I'm the girl out there in the big pink flamingo. Flamingo. I'm, I got, you're targeted now. <laughs> wow. Her name is Flo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, y'all take care and have a great weekend. Yeah. You too. Thank you again, Corporal Ivan Perez with us. He's the State Marine Specialist for the Michigan Department of Natural Resources Law Division.